welcome back to That Saturday Show. I'm your host, Tom Dent. That Saturday Show, of course, brought to you by the Albuquerque Center for Peace and Justice uh, at 202 Harvard Southeast. The uh, uh, Albuquerque Center for Peace and Justice strives to create a world where our collective needs are met sustainably and nonviolently. We value the interconnection of all life. We emphasize cooperation and respect diversity. We're committed to nonviolent conflict resolution, working for peace within ourselves, our community, and the world. We provide space for organizations and individuals working on peace and justice issues and network with one another, share information, and learn from each other's work. Through our programs and collaborations, we work locally to support uh, regional and global justice. And uh, one example is the first person I'm interviewing this morning. Uh, uh, Emily Peabody was referred to us by Veterans for Peace, one of the groups we're working with. This is an example of how we share information and uh, experts and uh, talented people from all over the world and locally. So here's some Peace Center announcements. Our um, uh, weekly food distribution is every Saturday at 9 p.m. in our parking lot. This is a free food handout. Um, and uh, our Peace Cafe is back up and running after, uh, and that's at nine o'clock uh, again in our parking lot. Uh, our uh, Peace Cafe is up and running after the holidays. That takes place every Thursday from 10 until 3 p.m. We'll stop by for a free lunch, organic food, free beverages, great conversations, acoustic uh, jams, uh, jam sessions, and uh, great conversation. And uh, get involved with the Peace Center, talk to folks here, see what we're all about. Um, so um, events coming up, our friend Connie Knutson is going to present her third in her series of peace, uh, sorry, race amities conversations. Um, it's called Race Amity and the Other T Tradition. Uh, she's presenting a DVD and discussion uh, at the Peace Hall uh, Saturday, January 21st at 3 p.m. Uh, again, that's 202 Harvard Southeast. Discover stories of historical uh, cross-racial friendships. Uh, Emily Peabody, who we're just about to have here, is going to present her one-woman show and benefit on the life of Jeanette Rankin, the first female uh, congressperson in the United States as part of her national tour at the Pew Center uh, this coming uh, Thursday, the 26th at 6 p.m. Please call the Pew Center at 505-268-9557 for any information on these three upcoming events. Uh, Emily is joining us via Zoom from Minnesota, uh, and uh, after um, this uh, this interview, we'll be playing some music by Dust City Opera that we've had on the show before, and then I'll be talking to Anna de Saunier of the People's Housing Coalition to talk about rent control legislation and the state's possible extension of rental and mortgage assistance after the federal COVID assistance uh, dries up, which is happening this month or next month. And of course, we're doing our initiatives for people to get on the ball and, 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 uh, and promote uh, responsible legislation in the upcoming 60-day um, uh, New Mexico legislative session. Emily? Hi, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Okay, so Emily, tell, tell us about, excuse me. Oh, I said from Minnesota where the roads are so sleek that the buses are not running today. And oh I'm supposed God. to head out the door to Kansas City. Wow, that's crazy. The, 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 whole, the whole country is pretty crazy right now. Apparently there's a a glitch with the with the FAA and all these flights are canceled. California is underwater. There's all sorts of massive storms in the south. Uh, I don't know if it's because uh, I'm sure it's because of global warming uh, or, or climate change and and maybe because Mercury and another planet are in retrograde right now. <laughs> So how long has your tour been going on and, and, and what can you tell us about Jeanette Rankin? Well, 
I learned about Jeanette Rankin back in 2017. I was looking for a story to go with a uh, 1915 hit song, I Didn't Raise My Boy to Be a Soldier. I was going to sing it at my church at a review uh, called She Persisted. It was back in the Elizabeth Warren days after she persisted in front of Congress and was told she was too persistent. Shut up, go down. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, that's. And I was looking for that story. I, I work at the library and I went to the children's biographies and I started looking through various books. This one actually came into my hands. I don't know if you can see it very well with the glare here, but uh, the book is on Jeanette Rankin and I, I just dismissed it. And then I looked at all these other books, came to that one and realized this was perfect to go with that song. The life of Jeanette Rankin is fascinating. She not only was the first woman elected to Congress, so here's a really nice picture of her, if I can throw that in front of the camera, um, but she was also a peace activist. She voted against both world wars. She was the only dissenting vote when uh, the US was looking to declare war on Germany and Japan. And she also um, marched against the Vietnam War. She was about 88 years of age at the time and the group called themselves the Jeanette Rankin Peace Brigade. Wow. And so she, she was a peace activist. Social justice was a huge thing with her. And uh, she introduced the first piece of social legislation. Um, uh, yeah, um, yeah, and yeah, so she, I love her. <laughs> I'm totally overwhelmed by her story. I love performing her show. It started out as a story, then it was a two hour script, then it was a one hour script, and then it was in the Minnesota Fringe in 2018. Um, it has changed through the years. I've added stories dropped other stories because they weren't quite as meaningful or as interesting and I've also you know added props more props more costumes I just have I just got two new costumes um, that I performed in the first time uh, on Sunday night Well, I don't. I notice in the poster she's wearing a very stylish hat. Was that one of her trademarks, kind of like Bella Abzug, for instance? <laughs> well, she does have a lot of hats that go with this show. I was I was devastated to discover one of them had gone missing between mm -hmm. shows, and I called the last place I was at, and that one they did not have it. So, so sad. Always looking for those antique hats. <laughs> Well, there's some, odd, yeah, there's some odd states where, where like, uh, uh, women were, like, the first uh, governors and, and, and congresspeople from, like, uh, Alaska and Wyoming, and I think there was, wasn't there a, a female governor in, uh, in Montana as well at one point? I do not know. Okay. I'm sorry. I just retired. Now I get to really learn stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, this this story was, um, you know, took a lot of, I did do a lot of study on that, but it was kind of um, zeroed in on Jeanette. And now I do want to expand my um, my knowledge quite a bit. As a matter of fact, one of the things I'm bringing on the road is an uh, audio book of Howard Zinn's yeah. book, yeah. which I think will teach me a lot. That, that's a, a well-known popular book at the Peace Center. There's a lot of groups and, and people associated with it. My, I think everybody from our local chapter of Veterans for Peace is familiar with that book and has read that. And it wouldn't surprise me if our benefactor and one of our co-founders of a local Veterans for Peace, Sally Alice Thompson, who's been involved with these issues since before I was born in 1954, I, I wouldn't be surprised if she knew Jeanette Rankin as well. And I know Veterans for Peace are, are help, helping you out with getting the word out and sponsoring your tour across the country. I'm excited. It's hard to find 
you know, how to, where all the peace organizations are, at least that was for me. I just Googled uh, New Mexico peace and Albuquerque Center for Peace and Justice came up. So I had a contact, some place I could call, but um, it's very hard to find them. And I, I, it'll be, I'll have a lot of fun in Albuquerque finding out about other organizations. Maybe well, we, uh, we, Susie can help. We, yeah, we've had over 30 uh, as as members of the Peace Center at one, one point or another. And, uh, uh, you know, like like I said, we, we share information. We uh, gather together for different protests and things. Uh, Stop the War Machine is doing a, a rally uh, on... Uh, I guess the is it Monday the sixteenth or seventeenth the official Martin Luther King uh, uh, federal holiday, and you were showing me a, a mug of of John Lewis uh, b before we got on here. Um, how, how, how yeah, there it is. Um, so are 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 you just involved in in the show and getting the word out, or or uh, are you involved in a lot of different causes and political movements? Well, I have been since, um, gosh, I've been passionate about, uh, about uh, injustice since, uh, since I could, well, expect, well, it really, I've always been kind of a compassionate person, but I, I started becoming active uh, uh, in the Central America issues back in the 80s. Uh, there is a group here in Minnesota called Women Against Military Madness. Um, and then they also, they share an office with the veterans for peace. And um, so that's, that's a little bit what's going on here in, in the Twin Cities. Um, I, a couple of summers ago, I went up to Bemidji uh, to protest Line 3. And wow, there were people from all over the country up there in the Bemidji area. Jean Fonda showed up. It was it, there. It was a fantastic event. Um, wow. I I enjoyed it very much. Um, and and you know you're doing something. I mean, some people, a lot of people I know got arrested. I I was pretty hesitant to because I had I believe there was a show like oh I know it was the Minnesota Fringe 2019 or 2020 was coming up, and I had some serious work to do on that. So I didn't want to be in jail with uh, with no pen or paper. <laughs> but I have friends at work. Hmm. Well, like, um, there hasn't been too much locally that I know of. Well, a lot of things have been sh shut down and put on, on hold um, by COVID, but uh, things are starting up again. We've had a lot of people saying, well, how come we don't have as many events right now with the, with the peace centers as as we did before? It's like you know, we're we're not out of the woods by any means. By that, we're still doing mandatory masking at the peace center. We'd like to have as many events as we we can, but we have to be careful. So, what are you yes, what are you not noticing across the country? How do you feel that your show is being uh, received? Well, I've just, I just did my first performance at my church here in Minneapolis, and it's been well-received. I mean, people say, it's, of course, they're telling me this, so of course they're going to say it's great. Um, but but yeah, they find it fascinating, too. And um, So um, you, were t you talked about uh, uh, the initial launch of your one-woman show uh, in, in Minnesota uh, at, uh, at your church. I, I, I know we've seen some, uh, uh, some great shows lately. I don't know. Um, I know that Cynthia, Cynthia uh, and Vero did a great national tour uh, presenting herself as uh, Har Harriet Tubman, and we had a, a local actress do that here at Pope Joy that was here for our unveiling of our Beautiful Nanaba Chacon uh, mural uh, in back of our peace center that featured uh, Bri Brianna uh, Brianna Taylor uh, and uh, uh, L'Oreal uh, Tasinge, uh, two female activists that uh, had their lives uh, uh, quickly ended by police violence. Um, so, um, so 
keep going with us. Um, have you lived in Minnesota all your life? And uh, have, you, I have. Ha have you seen any of these great one woman shows like the, I, I guess, one of the vagina monologues, uh, the Harriet Tubman show and things like that? I, I recently saw, and it was performed on Zoom, uh, a show about, I believe her name was Fanny Hammer. Hmm. Um, it's, uh, you could Google that, maybe I'm wrong. Um, maybe I'd like to be corrected. Uh, she was, uh, and, but I, you know, I can't remember everything about it, but it was good. It was, it was uh, stimulating. It was performed by one of our local uh, actors, very popular. Okay, I'm seeing her name is Fanny Lou Harris, and she's from the Mississippi Delton, become one of the most uh, powerful, passionate voices. Of Union the, organizer. Yeah. Of the voting rights movement and civil rights uh, for African Americans and greater op economic opportunities, which we're seeing here, were seriously withheld with. Uh, Bad, funky mortgages, uh, no sustained uh, gener generational wealth, uh, basically financial racism. Yeah, it's it's still here. Oh yeah, it's very disturbing. And of course, in Minneapolis, we had the shooting of George Floyd. Oh God, yeah, that was amazing, crazy. A lot of people. Well, there was a lot of of a lot of looting. So a lot of, of um, boards, uh, plywood went up uh, in windows. And then artists did some wonderful poster art on, on these um, ply, plywood uh, windows during that time. A lot, a lot of things for social justice and Black Lives Matter. And um, yeah, it was, it was uh, an interesting and beautiful response. Um, yeah, we, there was we, a. We sort of had a minor example of that here. We, we called for a little rally for George Floyd, and all of a sudden, th over thirteen hundred people showed up. And they, I'd I prefer to say walked rather than march because march is a <laughs> is a militaristic term, and I'm a veteran for peace, and I try to change my language as far as that's concerned. But they went down to downtown and. Uh, there were instigators there, and I think a lot of people that uh, objected to the march uh, caused a lot of the violence and windows to be broken out. And days after that, there continued to be windows broken out, but they did kind of the same thing you're talking about. They put up a lot of uh, plywood and wood on the windows, and there were some fantastic uh, civil rights art artwork that went up on there. So so uh, back to Jeanette, was she aware and conscious? It sounds like she was extremely aware of, of women's rights, uh, now voting rights, and things like that. Uh, and I guess people's perception of Montana is it's, I'm sure this has changed, but that is sort of like Oregon when it was first colonized and the laws written by white people that it was a very kind of racist state. You know, I don't, I don't know that it was a racist state. I don't think there were very many non-white people there. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, she, the only references that uh, Jeanette, uh, I learned about uh, and in her life is she, well, she, one of her neighbors, and I wish I had a picture of him here, she helped him buy his house because he was Black. And it, it had to be done that way um, yeah. back in, you know, the 60s. Uh, she passed away in 72. So, um, you know, things hadn't changed all that much by, by that time. It was starting how, how, to change. How long did she serve? More than one term? She served two terms, but they were not uh, subsequent. Mm -hmm. They, she served in 19, consecutive, yeah. They, in 1918, she was, um, she, she lost re-election. She, and so she um, went on to lobby and she was uh, lobbying for, for peace and for um, uh, uh, the Consumers League 
uh, which were trying to get people to buy products that were made in under good working conditions and sanitary factories that did not employ child labor. Mm -hmm. um, she worked, uh, you know, as a lobbyist for 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 many things and all over the country. Uh, she liked that. She loved traveling mm -hmm. around and and um, and motivating people. Um, she ran again in 1939, and she won. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and and that's when she voted against World War II. Well, well there were a heck of a lot of a heck of a lot of issues going on back then. Uh, my, I have a little bit of connection to Montana because my sister-in-law lives in Bozeman and my wife and I are big Yellowstone freaks because we, we've been to Bo Bozeman and we'll go like, oh, we've been to that restaurant. We sat on that park bench and the scenery is absolutely beautiful. But we're watching this offshoot called 1923 and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on back there. I don't know how historically accurate Taylor Sheridan is, but there was prohibition going on. There was uh, women's suffrage. There was, there's a scene where there's this guy from back east and other places that's trying to sell refrigerators and electric washing machines and the ranchers are going like, why do we have to do that? If we gave you money, then 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 you'd be the one in business, not us. And, you know, so there was resistance and there was the introduction of the uh, frequent use of motor cars. So that that must have been a very fascinating period in, in Montana history. Yeah, her family was uh, pioneers to the area. Her father was a carpenter, and he he, he was quite innovative and quite hardworking. And uh, I'm sure that had a lot of influence on her uh, stamina and uh, and uh, persistence. Yeah. Well, um, so. Um... How how did you reach out to Veterans for Peace? Uh, 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 how how did you get did you get involved with the national organization? Do you know Ken Meyer and Santa Fe? Well, um, there is a local chapter of Vets for Peace here in Minneapolis. Many of them came to my opening night performance back in 2018, mm -hmm. and I didn't even I don't think I even invited them. Somehow they heard about it, and uh, they've been very supportive ever since. I have. Every now and then I'll do something with them. Not not as Jeanette Rankin, but as J. Emily Peabody. And, you know, there'll be a protest or something that, that resonates with me. Now that I'm retired, I have a little more freedom to uh, get more involved. Well, um, when, when do you think you're going to land in Albuquerque? And uh, we're all looking forward to... Uh, your presentation on one woman one woman show uh, and what's what's the date again for that? I believe it's the twenty sixth, so it'll be right. right. It'll you know have a three hour break before from the coffee house in the afternoon until the performance in the evening. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to that coffee mm -hmm. coffee lunch thing, meet people. That'll be fun if I get there in time. Yeah, I'm sure I will. I'll probably well, we we, we just quickly found out about your show through the uh, uh, Veterans for Peace and uh, Stop the War Machine email chains, and we've got the event up on our uh, website and our Facebook page, the Albuquerque Center for Peace and Justice, um, through the TV show. Uh, like I said, uh, indicated to you before, we're uh, shown on uh, uh, Comcast Cable 27, a City Public Access, and five different Facebook pages, including that Saturday Show Facebook page, uh, New Mexico Activist Network, Activist Community Podcast, and my page. So, and we're trying to get our interns have already put you up on our uh, on our Instagram. We're trying to get flyers up there. So we're hoping as many people as possible can quickly attend your show. So we're I looking sure forward so. to it. And I uh, thank you very much for uh, taking your time to be with us today and uh, have a good day. Thank you so much. And check my website for more information. See a list of shows that I'm doing as they, okay. as they we'll, come up. We'll, we'll try to get a graphic up on there. What, what is your website for everybody? Thornproductions.org. Thornproductions.org. Um, we'll, Thorn yeah, we'll has a sharp. All right. 
All right. Well, we're looking for, for forward to a sharp performance. So thanks again and, and ha have a very good day. One, two, three, two. So that was a pretty intense song we heard from the Dust City Opera. It's called Stars. That was recorded at the Empty House with a Giovanni string quartet. And maybe at the end of the show, we'll uh, uh, tack on Angie by Dust City Opera, which is which I made the mistake during a previous show of saying, oh, this is their cover of a Rolling Stone song, but it's actually a completely original song. And now we're lucky to be joined by uh, Anna Lee Desaunier, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Hi, Anna. Welcome to that Saturday show. 
Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Well, again, I'm your host, Tom Dent, and uh, I know that uh, even back to my early days in the, in the late 80s with a local New Mexico public interest research group when we founded the uh, Landlord-Tenant Hotline, uh, which has since uh, gone kaput, and when you call Santa Fe and try to get information on that, they put you on hold forever and charge you 20, uh, $25 for le legal uh, uh, devices, and we tried to process some of the MFA uh, uh, rental and, and mortgage assistant uh, uh, applications and loans here at the Peace Center, but we kind of had to give that up and give that back to uh, uh, the city and the state because of the complexity of the uh, uh, of the bureaucracy with all that. And uh, so the reason, one of the reasons that we're uh, talking to Anna is, I guess the main reason is that the uh, federal assistance for uh, for mortgage and and rental assistance is because of COVID is on the verge of running out in the next month or so. And I know that there's been different actions through the governor and through the state legislature to promise to to cover those funds and also for the city to extend these programs and extend aid to people who are on the verge of assistance and being treated horribly by these by the slumlords, um, I guess I'm hearing that 40% of uh, Albuquerque are, are are all renting right now. And mm -hmm. we've heard things about people shuffling Section 8 people around. We've heard um, veterans and other people who are on the verge of eviction. And, uh, and now that we have new Sheriff John Allen in here, who knows what his department is going to be doing about uh, either helping to keep people in their houses or kicking them out. Uh, Anna is involved with the uh, uh, the uh, well, this is the uh, uh, the People's uh, uh, Housing Project. Is that the name of it? Yes, the People's okay. Housing and, Project. Yeah. And uh, I was referred to Anna by T. Bex Hampton that we had on a couple of our earlier shows talking about the Stop the Stadium. So, uh, Anna, uh, can you uh, tell us about how you got involved with this? I know that. Uh, you guys have had a couple of protests and, and tried to put legislation through in Santa Fe and memorials through city council on, especially on uh, on establishing rent control here, which would, what I was really shocked by was uh, there has never been, uh, you know, we had a little vignette on this, there's never been actual rent control legislation uh, in New Mexico whatsoever. Yeah, rent control is actually illegal in the state of New Mexico. Uh, and it's it's interesting, you know, when I tell people that they say, what? That can't that can't be. That sounds so undemocratic. Yeah, exactly. It is. Uh, so luckily, uh, you know, through our work, we have a bill that will be introduced. Um, but I'll back up a little bit first uh, and I guess start from a little bit of the beginning. Yeah. Uh, Bex and I met each other on the internet, actually. We both felt very outraged by the proposed uh, stadium bond at the time. You know, we're both young people. Uh, we both work in the service industry. She works at Jimmy John's. I was working at a local bar. And, you know, we're all struggling to make rent, pay groceries, um, all those types of things coming out of the pandemic. And when we heard that, you know, the city wanted to put Albuquerque, you know, put it as taxpayers in debt to a stadium bond that would build a stadium for already, uh, you know, very wealthy owners. We just it felt like a slap in the face. And at the time I lived in Barelas, um, I actually lived on iron <laughs> uh, a few blocks away from the proposed site. And I felt very passionately about the issue. And I really, we went, we just went really gun ho and tried, tried to do everything we could to to stop the stop it from passing, we went door to door and we informed, you know, my you know, uh, neighbors at the time that 
this was happening and nobody even knew it was happening. People whose homes would were, you know, the, the plan, <laughs> the blueprint was on top of their homes. Uh, they didn't know that this was going on. They didn't know that they could vote on it. Mm-hmm. And so we, we, you know, we gave it our all knowing that it could still pass. And, you know, the United team, they poured tons of money into commercials. We didn't have, you know, we just had each other and tried to gain, you know, more supporters along the way. And miraculously, we were so thankful that it did not pass. Uh, We worked with local leaders in the community, Francis Armijo that I know, um, I think you might have, no, maybe not, sorry. I thought maybe you might have had her as a guest, but she's the um, president of the South Broadway Neighborhood Association. We worked with her and South Broadway actually voted down the stadium um, with like 80% of people who voting voted voted it down. Uh, so yeah, that was a great victory. It really got me energized. It made me feel like I could make a difference like we could preserve Albuquerque. I am from Albuquerque, I'm born and raised here. I love uh, this city so much. And I had the opportunity to move away for a couple of years. I lived in Austin, Texas. And I saw Austin just, you know, just become attacked by gentrification and, and you know, their Latino and black populations just fell. And so much of the cultural integrity of that city Um, has been compromised and it would just break my heart if that happened in Albuquerque so that's why I do the work that I do at People's Housing Project and that's why we decided to create People's Housing Project after um, our victory with the stadium Um, because we wanted to keep going we knew that this was not going to be the last um, attack of gentrification we knew it was going to keep coming and we we want to you know defend the cultural integrity of our city. We want to keep people in their homes. We don't, we want to prevent displacement. Um, And yeah, that's kind of our mission right now. And we see the ability to have rent control for us to democratically decide if we want it as a tool to stop displacement. Um, You know, a lot, there's a lot of critics of, you know, who have criticisms about rent control. And uh, the thing is, is, is one one bill, one ordinance isn't going to fix our for-profit housing industry in this country, but we can keep people in their homes. We can um, we can protect the cultural integrity of our neighborhoods, um, and and so we're going to do that. Well, the for housing uh, um, uh, uh, for-profit housing industry is like crazy. Uh, one thing I mean. I've seen, seen is that in the last two years, or at least last year, the uh, uh, the cost of renting has gone up uh, 18.7%. I remember back in the day when I was going to university, even up to 1986, you could crash on somebody's couch for $50 a month. And now my daughter is about to turn 18 and scared to death going like, oh, I could out there, it's probably... $1,200 for a studio apartment for somebody right now. So it's crazy. And, and yeah. also kind of a reflection of the pandemic where, what, 23 plus millionaire billionaires were uh, formed over the pandemic and the um, the disparity between the uber rich and, and, and the rest of us, the middle class and the poor is just uh, skyrocketed. We have the same thing here. We have, uh, you know, the bases, Sandia, uh, Los Alamos, uh, the movie industry, where there's a huge economic gap between them and the people who, like 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 you say, work in the service industry and are trying to survive. Um, and we've talked uh, before about the horrible slumlords that uh, control a lot of these uh, rental units, like uh, TNC Management and uh, and yeah, and yeah. and Graystar. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, and and. You know, I just went to your uh, uh, People's Housing Project and I saw a quote by our former president of Veterans for Peace that's a member of the Peace Center here, Charles Powell, that he knows of at least one or two decorated veterans who have been evicted from their homes here in Albuquerque. 
And I know a lot of people who are on the edge and uh, there's a lot of Section 8 housing that's been moving around and the city and other people have talked about uh, building affordable housing, but we've never really seen it happen. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, the phrase that they constantly use is affordable and market rate housing. They, they stick it together, you know, so that we're like, oh, yeah, they're, you know, okay, cool. They're, they're doing something um, for housing. Um, but it's really the fair market rate housing that they're really focusing on. And what is, what does that mean? Um, fair market rate is not fair for working people. It's just not, it's not affordable. Um, it, it basically comes down to, uh, you know, landlords are deciding to price things based on each other. So, you know, if someone raises it, oh, well, I can raise it too. And then all of a sudden, it's basically the amount that they can squeeze out of us. Uh, and so there's nothing fair about that. And a lot of the time, the city has really shown that it wants to roll out the red carpet for developers and, you know, give them all these tax breaks uh, to build housing that, we can't afford. Um, a great example of that is uh, Titan. Uh, they have, you know, received lots of lots of benefits from the city. Um, and you know, as an example of what what they're actually contributing, you know, there's the Broadstone Knob Hill. I don't know if you've driven by, uh, yeah. and uh, those are renting for sixteen fifty for a studio. The last time I checked. Jeez. Uh, that's, I, can, yeah, I, I, I could never I, afford that. I could never afford that. And I don't, I honestly don't, I don't know too many people who could. I mean, maybe some of my family friends that are, you know, established, maybe lawyers or doctors. That's about it. That's about it. Everybody else, um, you know, the teachers, the nurses, the, you know, all of the people in this community that, you know, take care of us that that make our society run. They can't afford these prices. And um and even even when they say affordable, uh even that isn't isn't really affordable to a lot of people. Um if you're making minimum wage, you know, even even six hundred is gonna be a lot for you. Really? Well, you know what I, I I've been seeing maybe in some old figures is it says that uh and the, the mortgage finance assistance and the emergency uh, rental program that's up right now, there's over uh, uh, 11,000 people enrolled in the uh, emergency rental assistance and over 17,000 in the uh, mortgage finance uh, assistance. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it's crazy. It's crazy how people can, yeah. can tow this line and, and afford living where they're living right now. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is a lot of, you know, how can I say, maybe politicians, investors. Are, are there any, figures out, the, are there any it, figures out there for the people that are being actively evicted? Um, I would I, have I, to look into like more current numbers. I do know that. Uh, several hundred people were evicted during the pandemic illegally. And I know that's definitely affecting us currently. Um, yeah, I, I know I, that, that that happened to our friend uh, and activist, Celinda Guerrero, who's involved with uh, her husband, Clifton White, and Black Lives Matters protests that the uh, mm -hmm. Bernalillo County Sheriff's Department kind of targeted her. And she was, her family was one of the first to be evicted from the Knob Hill area. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so, it, so I, I know that I you mean, guys and it's, have... it's completely, it's, you know, and that's where you really look at also, you know, the, where are we spending our resources? You know, they're spending resources a lot of the times for law enforcement, the exact, doing the exact opposite. We need to keep people housed, not send, you know, militarized police to force them out of their homes. Like, how do we figure out um, and, and that's why, you know, we really feel like rent control should be an option that we have 
to pull upon. It absolutely shouldn't be illegal. It's undemocratic for us to not have the ability to decide whether we want it or not. Yeah, there should be a way to, to take these slum lords to task and make them toe the line legally and, and help out the people rather than evicting them. But yeah, we, we've, we seen, we've seen we for did. a long time when we look at city council, I've been there a number of times, and it seems like half the city council is controlled by the police and the other is controlled by NIOP and, 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 the, and the developers and realtors. It's like, and, and also, if you go down Unser way out to the, the new UNM hospital out there, the Sandoval thing, you can see tract homes built by Paul Allen, Broadmoor, Pulte homes and stuff like that that go on forever. And nobody lives in these houses. It's crazy. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you mentioned that we had uh, worked, we worked with Tammy Feeblecorn, uh, who is uh, at People's Housing Project. We call her the People's Counselor because she she listens. She listens. Um, and uh, she's willing to work with groups like ourselves. Um, I think, you know, our representative should be because uh, we're the ones on the ground talking to people. That's what we do. Every week we go out and we talk to people about what's going on. So we know what's going on, you know? And uh, we, when we spoke with her, she uh, agrees to present a memorial to city council. And it would have been a memorial, it's symbolic, you know? Nothing would have actually been enacted because it is a state law. But it would have sent a message, hey, here in Albuquerque, we want to have the ability to democratically enact rent control should we choose to. Right. And, and that was City Memorial M-22-5 that was voted down by City Council 7-2? It was. It was. Uh, the only councilors who voted in favor were Tammy Feeblecorn and Ike Benton. Oh, wow. And the rest decided to vote against their own power. <laughs> it would have given local communities more control over their own house housing policy. Well, I think so, uh, in following city council, I think one person who has uh, undue influence over these people is the, the realtor's realtor, uh, Trudy Jones. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, you know, during this memorial, uh, you know, Chuck Sheldon himself from TNC showed up. Ooh, uh, wow. You know, um, of course, not in favor of the memorial to oppose it. And, you know, he talked about, like they, you know, they all talk about, oh, well, they have costs too. Okay. Um, but the funny thing is, is we go to, we go to Chuck's, uh, residences uh quite often and we've met people who haven't had heat for three years God. so i mean I, you might not like, I mean you're not even taking care of people now and you want to continue to have the freedom to raise the rent as much as you want without even providing them with you know suitable housing um and, you know, he has got a little bit of a wake-up call recently because we have been organizing uh, his tenants and his, um, have been organizing and they have, you know, demanded that these basic, that he comply with basic housing law, providing them heat and electricity, reliable electricity and whatnot. They didn't have electricity um, for a period of time. They were running extension cords and trading off cooking. Yes. Is. Um, That's crazy. So, that sounds, sounds like parts of the reservation. And I know that a lot of this stuff happens up in the international district. And we've been exactly That's where this is. Yeah, we've been working with a lot of groups and, and, and hoping that the international district gets itself more organized. But these, yeah. these well, we've seen, but you know, it's so hard when you're in survival mode, just trying to make sure you keep your housing to have time to organize. So that's really, that's why it's so, it's it's difficult, but it's not impossible. And I think that, you know, that's been one of the most encouraging parts of organizing uh, lately. We have 
been successfully um, um, assisting tenants to abate rent legally. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if, if the landlord isn't making repairs, you have a legal right to withhold uh, right, 33% right. percent of your rent. I saw I saw that the most the, a lot of the tenants with Graystar are withholding rent because they're not honoring the what is it the law that says repairs must be made within seven days. Exactly, same thing with TNC, and mm -hmm. a lot of you know a lot of tenants are you know okay you know I mean they're scared of retaliation. This is their very backbone to their life is housing, mm -hmm. and uh, but when we all get together and you know, they see that, like, you know, it's not just me, my neighbor's watching, my other neighbor's watching, people's housing project is watching. So guess what? Here's my rent abatement form. You have, well, uh, you, need to fix, you need to fix this, or I'm not paying. And well, it's, we, working. it's working. People are, after three years, we had a woman finally get her heat fixed. Um, people have been saving money on rent when the repairs aren't made. Um, and so we're we're trying to really we want to have we want Albuquerque Albuquerque to be a tenant strong city to where landlords are not allowed to abuse us. Wow, this is really good information. We're starting to wind down on time, but um, I did want to ask you since this is part of a two part uh, two part um, series in our program where, where we're trying to get people aware of what's going on in the 60-day legislative session and uh, what pertinent bills there are. Uh, are there bills right now coming up in the session uh, that deal directly with mortgage and rental assistance? I know that, like, like I probably said in the beginning, the federal assistance is drying up and uh, the governor has proposed 20 million at this point. There was another 70 million that was proposed over here through the Mortgage uh, Finance Trust Fund. Um, and uh, I see that there's a Senate Bill 19 out there that was sponsored by uh, Senator Nancy Rodriguez. Uh, do you, uh, can you tell us about uh, upcoming bills and how the public can get involved by calling their yeah. state reps and senators to support these bills? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the one that we're working on in a more direct manner um, is the repeal of the prohibition on rent control with Senator Linda Lopez. Uh, we'll be sponsoring that. Um, it's been drafted, uh, should be introduced soon. Uh, and if they could follow us on our um, People's Housing Project Facebook and Instagram, we'll be giving updates there. And yeah, we will definitely be mobilizing to make sure that, you know, that they know in Santa Fe that the people are behind this. Um, we want our democratic right to have this tool in our toolbox. And yeah, we would love to have as much support as possible. The more that the public comes out to make their voices heard, the more likelihood we have of getting this repeal passed. So so how do people contact you? Do they go to the People's Housing Project? Is there a number? Is there an Yeah, email? People's Housing Project. Uh, you can send us a DM there on Instagram or on uh, Facebook. Um, I can also give them an email if they prefer. We just made it. Let's see. Do you do you plan any events or or, or gathering at the Roundhouse or, over the session? Uh, yes, we will be planning some. At the moment, there isn't. Uh, we're not able to schedule them yet. Uh, well, well, please let us know. So we, we will. We will right. definitely. And then they can also email us at a b q p h p five zero five at gmail.com. Well, wow. well, thanks very much, Anna. Yeah. Um, this is very important stuff. Thanks for being on that Saturday show and, and have a really good day. And now we'll be hearing hopefully another song by Dust City Opera. And uh, that'll that will do it for that Saturday show. We will see you next week. Thanks, Anna. Thank you for having me. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.
Until the next time, it's time to say goodbye. When you out here in the streets, keep it real, 505. We love everybody, we just want to let you know. Thanks for tuning in to that Saturday show.